Hello, this is Catherine from Accelerated Reader, reading books for you. Today, I will be reading Henry and Kathleen, series of children's books by Taryn Jamie. Before I begin reading, I would like to give a big thanks to the author for sending me this book to read on my channel. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book. Don't forget to like, and subscribe. The Henry and Kathleen series of children's books by Taryn Jamie. Dedicated to, I dedicate these books to all the beautiful and adventurous children I have worked with over many incredible years who have come from a huge array of cultural backgrounds, walks of life, and with various learning abilities, and who have all given me such valuable life lessons in return. I appreciate every single one of our magical and educational fun days out with so much of the diversity London is famous for. I thank them for the amazing fun we shared through experiencing so many extraordinary landmarks together in London, out of London, and on our travels abroad. I am grateful for all of the beautiful culture we encountered and all the inspirational learning and character building experiences I treasure in my memory. Henry and Kathleen were my parents' middle names, and I dedicate this series to them. They always gave me the very best of whatever they could, along with the passion and drive to reach for my dreams and to try to be the very best version of my highest self. I wish all my readers, young and mature, a fun-packed, magical reading experience. I hope my messages on good manners equip you with the tools and positive energy to open doors and the drive to be the very best version of yourself. At the same time, I hope that these sweet little tales in the series will remind you that you can still enjoy the thrill of life's unpredictable twists and turns. Never shrink from adventure and challenges, and don't shy away from being who you truly are. You were put on this earth to be you, a creation in progress of who you were born to be. Wishing you so much love and good health in your life physically, mentally, and spiritually, and all the happiness this beautiful planet has to offer. Taryn. Today, I will be reading book one from the Henry and Kathleen series, A Magical London Adventure by Taryn Jamie. Kathleen and Henry loved the outdoors. Often, they would run out of their house, racing through their narrow garden, teasing and tickling each other, playing catch. The children were always joking around, not taking matters or danger too seriously. Kathleen and Henry were happy and proud to be brother and sister. Occasionally, they would argue, as all siblings do, but their arguments were always sorted out pretty quickly, particularly whenever mum or dad would hear them. Of course, they were the best of friends. Kathleen was seven years old and Henry was nine. Often, Kathleen and Henry would come up with wonderful, inventive stories and mysteries about fairies, goblins, 
and far off different places, sharing their fantasies and ideas about what was hiding in the bushes. They imagined mystical creatures of all shapes and sizes, worms growing fiery wings and giant spiders carrying miniature green goblins with hairy ears. Kathleen had such a vivid imagination that Henry loved listening to her adventurous stories, which she would tell him over and over again. Henry always asked Kathleen to tell him something exciting, which would send his imagination drifting off to a different land. One day on a hot summer afternoon, Kathleen and Henry had just been told off by their mom after not eating correctly at the table. Henry's manners were very bad. He chewed his food with his mouth wide open, as wide as a cat yawning after a long day chasing mice. He slumped his body over his plate, shoveling food into his face as fast as he could, and he didn't put his napkin on his lap. Kathleen did not hold her knife and fork correctly. She flicked her stinky shoes off her feet and started to kick her sweaty toes against Henry's ankles. She thought this was fun, laughing out loud at what she was doing. Henry got annoyed with her. Then, of course, they both started to argue. Mum did not find this amusing. After all, what about the lovely balonies she had just prepared for them? As the argument grew, the spaghetti started to fly everywhere. Mum was furious with them and told Kathleen and Henry to leave the table immediately so they wouldn't get to finish their delicious meal. Mum said, both of you are to go outside and think seriously about your terrible behavior at the table. Off you go. I don't want you inside the house. With very upset looking faces stained with the tomato sauce from the bolognese, they wiped their mouths with their sleeves and walked out into the garden as fast as they could before Mum could tell them off even more. Kathleen and Henry went to sit under a big, beautiful tree covered in cherry blossom and overgrown with honeysuckle. The bees were buzzing in the shade. They seemed harmless. Henry and Kathleen were comfortable with the bees buzzing around their heads as long as they sat very still. Kathleen and Henry relaxed on the lawn and decided to lie down and stretch their backs after eating. Both of them closed their eyes for a while, feeling rather upset when suddenly Kathleen sat up immediately. Hey, I know, she said. What is it? asked Henry with a surprised and confused look on his face. I have a fantastic idea of how to apologize to mom. Really? What is it exactly? replied Henry. Hmm. Well, Henry, I hope you liked the idea, said Kathleen. Why don't we write a short and magical story on etiquette and how to behave at the table. That way, we can give the story to mom as a sort of 
well, an apology. Then she will hopefully forgive us for our bad manners at the table. And we can prove to her how great we are at actually listening and understanding how upset she was with us. Okay, said Henry. What a brilliant idea! Kathleen and Henry looked at each other and smiled with delight that they had both come up with an idea so ingenious. Let's think about a story and come up with ideas of what we can write about, said Henry with excitement. So they both came up with magical ideas of mysteries and myths, ideas and tales. Henry ran into the house and found a pen and an old notepad. As he ran back out from the house, Kathleen, in good spirits, jumped from behind a wall onto Henry's back, laughing and tickling him, giving Henry the biggest of frights. Off you get, shouted Henry, while he tried tickling Kathleen to get off of his shoulders. Eventually, she did. Then they laughed and giggled. They sat down again under the shady cherry blossom tree and started to discuss all the exciting and amazing places they would like to visit in London, where they lived. Where would be the first place they would both like to go? Their imagination soared. Their first stop would be the London Eye. How they loved riding on the eye, overlooking the whole skyline of London. They hopped into one of the capsules, slowly moving around and around. They imagined sitting on two chairs, facing each other at a beautiful table, covered with a pure white linen cloth. Placemats were set elegantly on top, made from white silk, with silver knives and forks, perfectly laid out either side, waiting to be used by well-mannered and well-presented children. The children sat up beautifully with straight backs, using their index fingers to hold the utensils correctly with their napkins placed neatly on their laps. They both started to eat. Kathleen and Henry ate impeccably well, with their mouths closed and their elbows tucked in by their sides as they cut their food. They sipped freshly made lemonade, squeezed from the organic sweet homegrown lemons mom and dad grew in the garden. They ate fresh vegetables roasted with mom's special herbs, to which she always gave loving attention, watering them every day just outside the kitchen door. The sky was a beautiful blue. It was almost mystical that day. It was so clear as the children stared through the glass of the capsule. Slowly, slowly, they went around and around, enjoying every bite of their scrumptious meals. Henry said, Kathleen, aren't we the luckiest children in the world? Look at us, so high up in our capsule with such an incredible view of London. And we have this luxurious dinner to munch on. Yes, you're right, Henry, said Kathleen, feeling so grateful. Kathleen suddenly looked startled. A shock look passed across her face. What is it? said Henry, confused and in a 
bewildered tone of voice. Well, well, said Kathleen in a frightened, nervous voice. Look up there, she pointed. Henry gasped in amazement. Ah, it looks like a giant bird. As the giant shadow came closer and closer to the capsule, it grew bigger and bigger. Suddenly, its claws started to grow larger and larger, and the spikes on its back cast their shadows into the capsule. The creature's tail grew even longer, and it had what looked like a spear attached to the end. Henry and Kathleen started to get very scared. All of a sudden, the giant creature came flying through a big cloud. Before Henry and Kathleen knew it, the large, hideous creature landed with a massive thud on top of the glass capsule. The silhouette of the creature's shadow frightened them immensely. Of course, Kathleen and Henry could not run anywhere as they were both so high up in the sky at the top of the London Eye. They would have to wait at least 30 minutes before they could walk out the capsule door. They started to scream and shout and hid under the table shouting, Go away! Go away! Help! Help! They looked in shock at the frightful creature. They didn't want to believe it, but realized after about five minutes of screaming that it was a dragon. The dragon looked hard at them through the glass, curious as to why Kathleen and Henry were being so silly by hiding under a table. Quiet eventually filled the capsule. Kathleen and Henry realized that they needed to calm themselves down. Once they did, they started to notice that the dragon was a beautiful, gleaming green color. The sun shone on its wings, bouncing off the dragon's skin, sparkling and creating beams of light, which poured into the capsule. As the sun shone on the dragon, a shimmering haze of all the colors of the rainbow reflected through the glass of the capsule, filling it with crystal-like shapes and streams of blues, greens, reds, golds, and silvers. The light from the capsule glowed in the sky, brighter than a star. Kathleen's and Henry's faces lit up at the sight of the large object as they shook with fear. Then, much to their surprise, the dragon said in a soft tone, Hush, children, don't be afraid. I'm here to take you on an exciting adventure through the best parts of London and show you the most beautiful sights. At each stop and each landmark, you'll show me how well behaved you can be. And only once you achieve that, I will take you home. Kathleen and Henry's eyes were enormous by now, watching the dragon in absolute disbelief. Warm magic smoke slowly started to trickle through the dragon's nose. The dragon blew the smoke through the glass capsule, creating a hole large enough for both children to be lifted by the dragon's magic powers and sucked through before being placed down on his big scaly green back. Away they flew through the air, up, up, higher and higher they went. Over London, they soared and they were amazed by what they saw beneath them. 
My name is Jasper, said the dragon. You are now my friends. Trust in me and I'll take you to see some of the most beautiful buildings in London. So Henry and Kathleen put all of their trust in Jasper the dragon, hoping it would lead them home quickly. Both children started to talk seriously about how they were going to get home because, understandably, they were quite worried. At that moment, the dragon said to them, Don't be worried. You're going to have the time of your lives. The next stop for the children was the Tower of London. Wow, look over there, shouted Henry as he pointed. Jasper flew into the Tower of London gardens at full speed, whizzing along the water of the River Thames. He slowly and gently landed with the children holding tightly on his back, laughing. All the ravens at the tower got a huge fright. They flapped their wings with a great flurry and flew off as fast as they could. Seeing something as huge as Jasper was extremely intimidating for them. Jasper led the children to where the queen keeps her stunning crown jewels. Kathleen and Henry were in awe of what they saw before them. The beauty of the crown jewels shimmering brightly under the lights, safely locked away in their glass case. But Jasper had the keys. Henry and Kathleen were shocked. They knew that absolutely nobody would ever be allowed to open such a cabinet. Nevertheless, Jasper turned the key and slowly opened the door and picked up the crown, carefully placing it on Kathleen's head. Kathleen looked up in amazement. Wowee! said Henry. Kathleen felt so proud and lucky to be wearing one of the crown jewels. Not many children in the world would get this sort of opportunity. Henry looked at Kathleen, hoping secretly that he would also have his turn. And he did. Jasper reached into another crystal cabinet and pulled out a set of knight's armor and a sharp jewel encrusted golden sword. Here, Henry, said Jasper. Wear this and feel proud. As many hundreds of years ago, this was the armor of one of the king's brave knights. Henry and Kathleen looked ahead, and there before them was the most beautifully laid table, covered with delicious snacks of all kinds. From pancakes to sweet fruits, the table had silver goblets, silver cutlery, and porcelain crockery. Kathleen and Henry sat down graciously, eating and drinking, being merry and minding their manners in every way they could. Once they had finished, the dragon said to both children, You have passed the first test. You did not ruin the glamorous and beautiful items I asked you to wear while you sat and dined. Well done. You must now place those items back into the cabinets. Henry and Kathleen gladly gave them back to the dragon and felt so much gratitude that they were given the privilege of such an experience. We will now fly on to our next destination. When we arrive, you'll be hungry again. So off they flew on Jasper the dragon's back. High up in the sky they went, soaring away. Quickly, they realized their next stop just a short distance along the river. 
Tower Bridge. With big smiles on their faces at this most wondrous sight, Jasper landed safely on the bridge with the children gripping his back. Jasper told them both to slide down his tail as this was the easiest way for them to climb off. So off they slid with much excitement. It felt like a game. What a beautiful monument the bridge was. This, children, is Tower Bridge. It's very close to the Tower of London and it's therefore called Tower Bridge. Now, don't get this bridge confused with London Bridge, as people often do, Jasper said in his gruff voice. Kathleen and Henry were so excited about how high they were on the bridge's top level and all the stunning sights they could see from this vantage point. Jasper the Dragon blew some magic smoke onto the bridge near to where the children were standing. The smoke was gold and sulfur and billowed out of Jasper's wide nostrils. As the smoke parted, there in front of them laid the most incredible table, especially laid out for the children to be seated. Come now, children, said Jasper. You must be hungry after all that flying. I know I certainly am. We flew for quite a long time over and around buildings before we arrived back here. So they sat and ate, feeling so happy and grateful to have all of these delicious treats magically laid out before them from Jasper's magical fiery nostrils. Kathleen was particularly hungry and ate her food a little too fast. Jasper had to tell her to slow down and mind how she looked when she was eating her dinner. Plus, she might choke. Henry laughed at Kathleen being told off which was not a very nice thing to do. Jasper, of course, then had to tell Henry not to behave that way with Kathleen and to mind his own business. Finally, Jasper said to the children, come on, you two, now that you've finished, we'll continue our journey and fly into those clouds above us and move on to our next destination. So off they flew once again, soaring high in the sky. Look, Henry pointed. What is it? said Kathleen. We're flying over the Shard. This is now the tallest building in London. Although in the future, it may not be. Wow, that is so tall. And look at how pointed it is. Jasper smiled and told the children that he was now going to take them away somewhere extremely special to where many kings and queens had lived. Close your eyes tightly, children, he said. And with a flash and a puff of smoke, the children had arrived in a beautiful garden, the most beautiful they had ever seen. This is Windsor Castle, said Jasper. Come on, children, we'll now walk into the castle. You may take a look around, and once you've finished sightseeing on your own, You'll then join me for dinner in the banqueting hall, where all the kings and queens of the past once sat. They found themselves getting a little lost when they suddenly came to a maze, a secret fun garden which you can twist and turn through 
as you try to find your way from start to finish through thick high walls of bushes. This took them quite a while to achieve, but once done, they laughed and cheered at how excited they were for achieving such a result. Now, the castle was not quite in the middle of London, but certainly close enough for a wonderful day trip out. Jasper eventually found the children and asked them to come inside the castle to dine. So off they went, running after Jasper and trying to catch his tail as they walked through the tiny doorway into the dining hall. They were exhausted after so much sightseeing around such a beautiful historic castle. There they sat, enjoying the meal that Jasper magically blew onto the king's and queen's dining table. Trails of bright yellow and red steam came out of Jasper's nostrils. But, oh dear, one of his nostrils got blocked and Jasper couldn't blow the smoke out of it to lay the table with dessert. He just could not blow his nose hard enough. The children's tummies started to hurt with all the laughter. They just laughed and laughed. Ha, ha, ha. Jasper started to blow his nose with his napkin, as that was the nearest tissue he could find. Through fits of laughter, Henry said to Jasper, you are aware that it's very rude to blow your nose at the table, Jasper. Yes, of course it is, said Jasper. Well done for noticing, Henry. You've just passed a very important test. You must leave the table to go to the bathroom if you need to blow your nose. Once the meal was over, the children stood up and were so excited to jump on Jasper's back again that they forgot to push their chairs in under the table. You've forgotten something, said Jasper. The children looked back. Oops, said Kathleen. We are sorry, Jasper. We need to push our chairs in quietly and say, please excuse me from the table. Correct, said Jasper. Well done. Now climb onto my back and off we'll fly to our last two destinations. The final destination will be the most important one of all. And if you pass that test, then you'll be crowned King Henry and Queen Kathleen. So off they flew high up into the crystal clear blue skies. Jasper flew past many beautiful landmarks in London, pointing them out. His wings were spread out wide like a giant bird, and he thoroughly enjoyed having the children seated on his back while he gave them yet another grand tour through the skies of London. They laughed and told stories of fantasies dreams, and the great adventures Jasper had in London with other children. Pigeons, ravens, and seagulls all kept asking them where they were going as they flew past. Eventually, Jasper answered one of them. We're off to the Magical Natural History Museum. Join us if you can keep up, he said with a big smile on his face. To Kathleen and Henry's astonishment, all the birds tried keeping up with Jasper, but unfortunately, Jasper just flew way too fast for them to keep up with him. So, of course, they were left behind. The birds were in a huff about this. Kathleen, Henry, and Jasper all laughed and laughed as they slowly descended towards the giant front doors of the Natural History Museum. Oh, how easy it is to fly through this door, said Jasper. 
It must have been made especially for me and the big dinosaurs you're about to see. He winked at the children, jokingly. The floors of the museum were very slippery, and Jasper had to apply his brakes on the ground with his big claw-like feet. Jasper told the children to hold on tightly as he skidded and ground to a halt. Sparks flying up behind them. His big dragon tail hit the floor with a big thud. Jasper felt a bit raw after that, and Kathleen and Henry couldn't stop themselves from giggling at Jasper's glowing red bottom. That was so much fun, said Henry. Let's do it again. Certainly not, said Jasper with a huff before a grin appeared on his face. Look, said Kathleen, a giant skeleton of a dinosaur. Wow, said Henry. Jasper told them both to go and find their way around the museum to have a good look around. Be careful of the big T-Rex, shouted Jasper, as the children walked quickly down the large museum corridor and threw into the great dinosaur section. Jasper smiled and called after them. Once you've seen him hiding around the corner to gobble you up, make sure you come back to this very spot to have your dinner. Jasper was, of course, joking with the children, and they knew he was. So they didn't feel so scared after all. The museum displayed some of the rarest and most wonderful artifacts in the world. Some of the dinosaur skeletons were enormous. The children's eyes grew wider and wider, and as they did, they suddenly heard a huge roar. The children walked around the corner, and there stood the most magnificent Tyrannosaurus Rex. As they stared with gigantic eyes in shock and amazement at the size of him, they eventually realized that he was not a real dinosaur, only a pretend one acting like a real one. Both Kathleen and Henry looked at each other and said, Phew! Thank goodness he's not real. They also saw how tiny the T-Rex's arms were and couldn't help but laugh at the sight of them and how small they were compared to his body. They wanted to tell Jasper all about what they had just seen. So off they went laughing loudly, shouting and running through the corridors. Shh, they both heard Jasper saying, Never run inside a building, a museum, or anywhere indoors unless it's a sports center. Do you understand, children? Yes, Jasper, said Kathleen. We're very sorry. We just got so excited and wanted to tell you all about what we had just seen. Okay, no problem said Jasper. Just please don't do it again, though as it shows a lack of respect for the place you are visiting. Thank you for understanding. After the children had apologized for their rudeness, they sat down at a beautifully laid out table that Jasper had produced by magically blowing out more of his magic smoke. Kathleen and Henry were so hungry after their long flight and their visit to the dinosaurs that they did not stop to think about what was good manners and what was not. Now, now, said Jasper, stop eating, please. Henry and Kathleen looked up. Having forgotten, it was impolite to start eating before everyone else at the table. Jasper spoke to them and said, 
children, when you are at the table and served a delicious and tasty meal, always remember to wait for everyone to be seated first. We can then all start eating together. This is called good manners. I understand that you're very hungry though, so it's okay for today. Henry and Kathleen apologized to Jasper once again and said how sorry they were for all the mistakes they were making. It's okay, children. You learn from your mistakes when you are younger so that when you are older, you hopefully won't fall into the same trap time and time again. Now, please eat and enjoy your meals. Bon appetit. Everyone then ate, very happily enjoying their food while telling great adventure stories of dinosaurs roaming faraway lands and birds with big claws searching for their prey. Once the children and Jasper had finished their tasty watermelon for dessert, the children remembered what to do with their napkins and how to push their chairs in. They climbed up Jasper's tail once again and sat comfortably on his back. Right, said Jasper. Are you both ready to fly higher than ever before? The children knew that although their trip was coming to an end, the most exciting part was yet to come. This was the last journey, which would lead them home. The children looked a little sad to be entering the last stretch of their big and exciting journey. How could life be the same after experiencing such an adventure? Jasper blew magic smoke over their heads to help them forget their sadness. As he did so, all the beautiful colors of the rainbow shone out of his large dragon nostrils, and he sucked in slowly all of the children's sadness until nothing was left inside them to be sad about anymore. All of a sudden, the children laughed with joy and were full of excitement and energy. Off we go! Whee! They shouted. Jasper shot through the Natural History Museum's doors. Hold on, he said in a loud voice. As they both sat on Jasper's back, having the time of their lives, Henry shouted, Look over there! That's the Science Museum right next door to the Natural History Museum. At the Science Museum, they show many different scientific objects, and you can get immersed in viewing many different things all about space. We would love to go there one day. Jasper turned and smiled at them. He was so pleased that the children had so much knowledge about the places they would love to go and see. High, high, higher, and up, up, they flew into the sky. The children reached out their hands, thinking that they could almost touch the moon. The most exciting thing of all was that the children could see the moon smiling at them as they flew past. Kathleen and Henry waved their hands to say hello, and as they did so, the most magical thing happened. Moon dust landed on their hair. Jasper's wings shone brightly as the moon dust settled. Jasper said in a loud but gentle tone of voice, Children, that is where I live. Oh, wow, on the moon, Jasper? asked Henry. Yes, that is my home and my best friend. Just like you, I have a home too. I will eventually return to sleep there once our journey is over. The moon was always kind to Jasper and gave him a place to lay his head whenever he needed. The moon reminded Jasper that if ever he were to feel lonely, he should look up at the moon 
and realized that it was just as far away from anywhere and anyone else as Jasper was. Jasper said to the children, always try to smile, always. Just like the moon, children. It doesn't just make you feel good, but also makes other people feel good when they are around you and in your company. Sure, said Kathleen. We'll do exactly as you say, Jasper, and we'll do our very best. All of a sudden, Jasper sharply turned direction and began to fly extremely quickly. Down, down, down he went through the sky. Woohoo! shouted the children with big smiles on their faces. They eventually caught sight of one of the most beautiful buildings they had ever seen. Buckingham Palace, shouted Jasper. Your last test will be here, and then you'll arrive home safely once you have passed. If you do not pass, then you will fly back to live on the moon with me. The children looked at each other. Either way, they were sure it would be fun. The children started to think about how they would be bouncing on the moon all day long, as there is not as much gravity on the moon to hold them down as there is on Earth. As they lost themselves in deep thought, Jasper flew fast through the gates of Buckingham Palace. The queen was expecting them and her guards were standing to attention. The guards did not move a single inch as they flew past them on Jasper's back. Astonishingly, one of the guards winked jokingly at the children. Kathleen and Henry didn't know whether what they had seen was real as they knew the guards are not allowed to move as part of the rules of working for royalty. It was just their lucky day that they got a guard to give them a quick wink and make them both smile broadly. The children laughed as it was so rare a guard would move at all or even blink for anyone who looked at him. Jasper landed slowly and gently in the grounds of the palace this time. And as the children were sliding off his tail, Jasper blew smoke gently over them both. With a whiff and a puff of smoke, the children suddenly found themselves wearing the most beautiful outfits. Henry wore the smartest black jacket and bow tie. He looked so well groomed from head to toe. His hair and nails were clean and his nails cut short. His black leather shoes so shiny that he could almost see himself in them. Henry certainly looked his best to dine in the royal household. Kathleen looked magnificent in all her glory. She was wearing a beautiful red dress encrusted with crystals and pearls with some of the finest lace one could wish for. She wore long white gloves and white shoes with a pretty small diamond clip in her hair to hold back her fringe. Her blonde hair flowed gracefully down her shoulders. These were the most beautiful clothes Kathleen and Henry had ever worn. They could not stop smiling and thanking Jasper. What pride they felt wearing these amazing outfits and having the privilege of dining at Buckingham Palace. Jasper said, We're now ready to go and dine in one of the world's most beautiful buildings. As he said this, the guards opened the palace's front doors for the children. Both children looked in amazement as they saw the incredible entrance hallway through which Jasper led them to the banqueting area. How wonderful they looked and felt in their smart, elegant clothes, so neatly sewn together and made from fabric of the finest 
quality. Classical music played gently in the background. What a beautiful sound it was. Almost like walking into a fairy tale. Kathleen and Henry caught sight of what was shown before them. There they were, two beautiful thrones. Before them was placed the longest and widest table they had ever seen, carved from the most beautiful wood. Of course, this table was designed especially for a large party to gather together and enjoy a formal meal organized by the queen and the rest of the royal family. Slowly, they sat down at the places which had been laid for them. Jasper at the head of the table, Kathleen and Henry opposite each other on either side of him. Just then, the palace butler came through the door holding a tray of delicious meals specially prepared for the children. Jasper was also excited about what was going to be laid before him. Elegantly and with gracious manners, both children ate their meal without even dropping a crumb. They sat down quietly, placed their napkins on their laps, held their beautiful silver knives and forks correctly, and sipped slowly from their glasses with no slurping noises. Henry and Kathleen made sure to sit up straight, kept their elbows off the table, and spoke only of pleasant topics that everyone would enjoy hearing throughout their meal. Jasper enjoyed listening to some wonderful stories about their childhood. Jasper also spoke a lot about his childhood and where he had grown up, a land so far away it would be hard to go into details now as the story is just too long. The children knew that if they needed to go to the bathroom, the best place to leave their napkins was on their chairs as a sign of good manners. As the meal came to an end, Jasper looked at both of them with kindness in his eyes. He was such a lovely dragon. He said to the children, there is one last thing you need to do to pass your test. What is it? They both asked. Jasper said to them, now children, think of everything you've achieved and where I have taken you on your wondrous adventure around and about London. Kathleen and Henry thought long and hard there was so much to think about as they had done so much. Yes, I know exactly what I need to say, said Kathleen. Thank you so much for everything, Jasper. We loved every bit of our adventure with you. Henry also said thank you most delightfully. Well done, said Jasper, smiling at them. You have both passed the test. Saying please and thank you is a very important thing. I'm very proud of you for remembering something so important. You need to say thank you as much as you can. You must always remember your pleases and thank yous. Henry and Kathleen both said together, we certainly shall. You may now sit down on your thrones, Kathleen and Henry. So they both sat down gracefully and carefully. Jasper placed beautiful diamond encrusted crowns on their heads. With huge smiles on their faces, they looked at Jasper in amazement. Jasper asked them both to shut their eyes tightly and to sit very still. Imagine you are back home lying peacefully in your beds, children, said Jasper. And so they did. Suddenly, they opened their eyes and there they were, in their beds, with their mum coming to say good night to them. Thank you, Henry and Kathleen, 
for the wonderful apology story you both wrote for me. What beautiful artwork you did. I truly am the luckiest mum in the world. You've certainly learnt your lesson, she added in her soft voice. I shall read your story over and over for many days to come. As mum kissed them goodnight, and they drifted off to sleep, both Kathleen and Henry hopped onto Jasper, the dragon's back, and flew high, high, higher up, up into the night sky, which was littered with stars. The moon smiled back at them again, glistening down on Jasper's wings and leaving moon dust in the children's hair. Off they flew onto their next adventure. The end. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for book two, High Tea Through the Tunnels of London. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book.